humans! Welcome back to the Elementals Project, where I, an aspiring science nerd and feng shui enthusiast, am painting every element in the periodic table as a fantasy creature and bringing you along for the ride. When they're finished, they're going to be a deck of cards that can be used as a scientific memory aid or as an oracle deck similar to tarot. To that end, I've assigned each of them a meaning, based on their chemical behavior, and I'm composing a companion book which I post page by page as I write it for my supporters on Patreon. I hope you come join us. Meanwhile, let's talk about copper. Copper is in the fourth period, hence the turquoise-colored background. This was nice kismet because it resembles verdigris, somewhat, and also because the copper color pops against it. Since this column of copper, silver, and gold are considered the main noble metals, I decided to paint the figures in this noble attitude, symmetrical and, well, formal. They are meant to look both regal and androgynous, like Tilda Swinton or David Bowie. Copper, moreover, will be flanked by cypress trees as a mnemonic to remember that its Latin name, cuprum, means cypress. In that case, they meant the island, but hurrah for homophones! Copper exists as a native metal, meaning it shows up in nature in its usable metallic form, which is pretty unusual. You will never find a lump of pure yttrium or hafnium, for example. And others, such as cobalt and nickel, exist in nature as metallic alloys, but they are a bitch to separate, so I've heard. But copper is just peachy. So humans have used it for many, many thousands of years. When we did start to smelt ores, copper was the first. It was also the first to be cast in a mold, and the first to be deliberately alloyed with tin, as it happens, which gave us the Bronze Age. So, yeah, pretty crucial historically. I'm homeschooling my youngest, as many of you know, and we are finding fourth grade a lot of fun, especially history. We found at the beginning of the year that he functions best with a single subject in any given day, so we attack a week's worth of math, for example, all at once. Our curriculum is flexible like that, and as long as everything does get ticked off and his test scores don't suffer, they're cool with it. The program is K-12. I'll link it in the description. History Day may be his favorite because it tends to be a light workload, but it might also be because we pause the lessons and have actual discussions about things. We fell down a rabbit hole of medicine in the late 1800s at one point. Right now we're studying World War II, and I found myself explaining that going back in time and killing Hitler would not solve the systemic problems that gave him power in the first place. Heavy stuff. But all of it has given the kid a taste for history, and now he's found the channel Oversimplified, which he absolutely adores, and I will link that below too. He watches the videos over and over, he's learning all kinds of stuff, and it's incredibly entertaining. Much better than the boring-ass history I had to learn at his age. <laughs> Actually, I, I take it back. Fourth grade was awesome. My teacher was this amazing world-traveling goddess woman who encouraged us to love learning. She made everything interesting. One day she read us the poem Jabberwocky, and then our assignment was to draw our idea of the creature, the Jabberwock, and she said she'd give us extra credit and a candy bar for memorizing the whole poem. A snicker snack, like the one in the fifth stanza. When she told us that, I got real excited, and I stayed up half the night that night to get it all committed to memory, and the following day when she asked for volunteers, my hand shot up. I was the first, I was the best, I was amazing! Except in front of all those faces, my brain froze, and all I could remember was, "'Twas Brillic." I said it and stopped, and my stomach dropped out of my feet, and time slowed to a crawl while all those eyes watched me. Twas brillig. <laughs> that was all I had. A hundred years passed, and then she mercifully asked me to sit down, try again another day. Other students stood up. They each had one or even two verses down. They got congratulated. The bell rang. Everyone went to recess, except me, turned to stone at my desk, and the teacher, and a boy who had detention. I unfroze. I stood up. 
I went to the front of the class, I took a deep breath, and I recited the fucking Jabberwocky, beginning to end all seven stanzas, no hesitation. <sighs> the sun came out, the angels sang, my shame was over. And the teacher, <laughs> trying hard not to laugh, gave me the candy bar. <laughs> About ten years ago, I told this story on a coffee raid, and my dear friend Mondo, who I've known since we were 18, with this funny look on his face, said, Was your teacher's name Miss Summers? And I was like, Yeah, why? Have I told this story before? And he said, No. I was the kid in detention. <laughs> and we all shared a hearty laugh about how we'd apparently known each other a lot longer than we thought. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, copper, yes. Heat conduction, electromagnets, oodles of technology. Well, it makes itself useful in all of the ways. It's corrosion resistant. It has good tensile strength. It conducts electricity beautifully. I also discovered it has excellent creep resistance, which just means it doesn't deform easily. But damn, what a phrase. I want to be creep resistant. Put it on my resume. We're here at this experimental camera angle again. I'm not a fan. My hand obscures my work. It's very frustrating. But the footage exists, so I'm sharing it with you. We learn from our mistakes, yes? I only tried this once, but that day I worked on a few different paintings, so that's why it keeps coming back. I think we have some zinc from this POV too, and then we'll be back to my standard angle, which I prefer. Although a mount in the ceiling would be awesome. I could have straight on footage like a real YouTuber. How amazing would that be? Here you see me. <laughs> Through the magic of editing, several months after that last shot, changing the draperies at the bottom of the robe. I just like realistic fabric better. I think it's nicer to look at and I wanted to step up my game a bit. After all, I do intend to sell the original collection for a million dollars. It should all be as good as I can make it. If it's a university that wants to buy it, I will also accept 800 grand and an honorary doctorate. Spread the word. We shall see. Despite my efforts to be original, I keep seeing Sava in my head from ElfQuest. Definitely some accidental homage happening here. And I was not actually trying to make them look like a sculpture. That was a side effect of making their skin the same color as the dress. Whoops. I should have thought that one through. But be it known that this is a living being who just happens to match their clothing to their complexion. Gold will be doing the same thing, so make peace with it. Just the other day, I introduced the Morgans to Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are Dead, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. Granted, it is really cerebral, and the pacing is strange, and the conversations are cryptic, but that's totally the point, and I just love it. Actually, it occurred to me while watching it this time that... Tim Roth's performance reminds me forcibly of Morgan Blue, while Gary Oldman has many of the personality quirks of Morgan Brown, so it was a bit more surreal than usual, even. I was like, crap, are my kids Tom Stoppard characters? <laughs> oh dear gods, what does that make me? I refuse to be the tragedian. He's a total ham. He talks too rapidly and he plays word games and acts all superior just because he knows which way the wind is blowing. <laughs> Fooey, I say. And I refuse to dwell on the fact that one of his lines adorned my famous, infamous, bedroom door of eyes and quotes, which I describe in this video. It was... We are actors. We're the opposite of people. Which is a fabulous way of expressing the fact that some of us need an audience in order to live. This is a line that has always spoken to me even as a fourth grader with stage fright. The Jabberwocky triumph would have meant nothing without Mondo and Miss Summers. An audience! Oh, man. I am the tragedian. <laughs> Did I mention that copper is biostatic? That just means organisms don't like growing on it, including bacteria and barnacles. It's therefore used to paint ships' hulls, and clever alloys of it are considered antimicrobial and used for handrails, faucets, door handles, and what have you. Medieval copper utensils were a better idea than they realized at the time. <laughs> and beauty? 
Oh, copper is... Copper is beautiful. Ancient royalty had jewelry made of it, which I'm trying real hard to mimic in this headpiece and collar ensemble. The handle I gave copper is humility, because it is so noble and important and beautiful, and yet is easy to find and smelt and work. It protects ships. It is crucial for electronics. It's the penny, for crying out loud. It's biologically necessary, and it's a post-industrial godsend. No job too big or too small. Thank you for watching. It means the world to me. After all, we're the opposite of people. <laughs> like and subscribe and comment if you wanna. Remember to come join us on Patreon. Take your Vorpal Blade in hand and stay healthy. Hey. May I have some root beer? I think no. Why not? Partly because it's morning and partly because I think we might be out. No, I'm not out. Then you can have some with your lunch, but it's really you sugary. Mean you mean lunch as in, like, the brioche? No, I mean as in, like, some cheese and stuff that you will have in an hour and not right now. Can I please have some lunch? In an hour and not right now. <laughs> you just want lunch so that you can have root beer. It's too early in the day. It will give you a tummy ache. Why don't you ever believe me?